across the fence, shaping the future of our environment. We'll join Vermont teenagers in the newest 4-H leadership program. The teens are learning about energy issues and getting ready to teach what they're learning to students in elementary school. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. The newest leadership program offered by UVM Extension 4-H is called TRI for the Environment. TRI stands for Teens Reaching Youth. It works like this. Vermont teenagers are learning about and being trained in renewable energy issues. Once their training is complete, the teenagers will then teach what they've learned to younger Vermont school kids. To find out more, I'm joined by Lauren Traster. Lauren is a 4-H Teen and Leadership Program Coordinator with UVM Extension. It's great to see you again. Thank you, Judy. It's always a pleasure to be here. Now, why is a program like Try for the Environment needed? Well, specifically, um, we know that energy issues are going to occupy more and more of the political discussion as, as uh, you know, coal and renewables and oil, all of that, you know, comes to a head in Washington and around the world. But what we know is that young people are, are aware of energy issues. Mm -hmm. They're very concerned about energy issues, but they really lack the skills to contribute um, to this to the solutions. And we want to give them as much knowledge um, and, and experience with energy issues so that, so that they, they can contribute their voice to the discussion. And as they grow older and when they get into the real decision-making um, positions that they're going to be able to tackle these uh, very challenging issues. Um, these are issues that they're going to be facing in their future. And, and so we want to, we definitely want to build the foundation for them so that they're going to be successful in what they're going to need to do in the future. Everything almost that we do relies on energy and the prices are skyrocketing. If mm -hmm. you just look at fuel prices, propane prices this winter, and I think that touches every segment of our society. Exactly, and I think, you know, uh, kids today are probably hearing these discussions at home, you know. Right. My guess is they're hearing their parents talk about which fuel source are we going to use? What are we going to set the thermostat at? Do we need to change our windows out to have more efficient windows? There is a conversation going on in Vermont and in every family, and we want to make sure that the teens and our younger students are going to get the information and knowledge that, that they're going to need to not only contribute to their family's discussion, but again, once they get older and have their own families and become the decision makers and the voters in the country, that they're going to be able to make sound energy policy decisions. What stage is the TRI program at now? So we're actually in a really fun stage right now. The program as it was designed, we, um, we were working with the Vermont Ed Energy Education Program and they developed a curriculum for kids in grades K through three. Once the curriculum was developed, we hosted a training. Um, and, and the training, prior to the training, we needed teens to um, apply as a team with other teens and have an adult mentor and they were selected to come to the training. At the training they were trained in the curriculum as well as in the logistics of the program because these teams have to go out and not only market the program, they have to teach the program, they have to evaluate the program and reflect on what they did to also help improve the program as we move forward hopefully in future years. So they've had the training now and some of the teams have actually begun teaching. So it's, it's a really exciting time. That's a lot of responsibility. It's a huge amount of responsibility. And, and I actually designed the program um, based on what some other 4-H states have done. The, the try for the, the teens reaching youth model is not new to 4-H. It's just we brought it to Vermont and, and shaped it around sort of this environmental energy literacy issue. Um, but it's specifically designed to really develop leadership skills. So it's not just go out and teach and do nothing else. It's, hey, you're going to be responsible for the program. And, and as I mentioned, you're marketing, you're teaching, you're evaluating, you're reflecting. There is a huge commitment. They actually sign a contract when they uh, were at the training because they have to go out and teach two separate programs over uh, the course of the next six months um, and so they have a lot of um, commitments that they had to make to me in the program. Well Across the Fence was at the teen training and for a further look at what the teens learned here's Keith Silva. Leaves on the trees shake. A kite stays in the sky. High school senior Aurora Hoey hasn't had a story read to her in quite a long time. I remember sitting in a circle and just like hearing the story and like 
it kind of made everything connect for me when I was younger and what we did this morning is a great way to have it all connect. Hoey is taking part in a training session for teens reaching youth for the environment. The program gets older students to teach younger students about environmental science. Try for the Environment is a partnership between the University of Vermont Extension 4-H and VEEP, the Vermont Energy Education Program. Our mission is about teaching kids what we call energy literacy. But what that means in simple language is that when a student graduates, graduates from high school and you say efficiency, they go, yeah, of course. And when you say renewables, they go, duh, of course. And that, that's kind of where, but you have to start somewhere and you have to start early and that's what's going on here today. UVM Extension 4-H teen and leadership specialist Lauren Traster heard about TRI, Teens Reaching Youth, being used by Utah State and adapted it to fit her mission. I'm really passionate about the environment and I came up with the tagline Try for the Environment and I thought it would be a nice extension um, to add and build off of our Youth Environmental Summit that we do but also through that program I've made some connections um, with other environmental organizations in the state and we knew that teens were really interested in energy issues so I thought it would be really cool to get the Vermont Energy Education Program with their renewable energy activities have them develop a curriculum that we could train teens to then go out and teach to younger youth. So it, it kind of came full circle from the 4-H world, but, but really bridging with some partnerships that we're already developing. The students at this training session are being taught to teach. Each team is tasked with going into their community and teaching students in kindergarten through the third grade. The lessons incorporate hands-on learning activities about wind and solar energy. Energy is a very abstract concept and you have to develop a set of really uh, simple, discrete, concrete experiences for young children. So I want them to understand a little bit about how this education happens. That good science starts with these really concrete experiences and that engineering is not something mystical. Engineering is tinkering and kids are natural tinkerers and so we want to develop disability in kids. You know, in traditional old-fashioned education, this got squashed. You, you needed to start book learning. Well, we want to keep kids tinkering right from kindergarten all the way through high school. These are like the leaves that you will put onto your tree. To For these middle and high school students, concepts about wind and light are elementary. Teaching, on the other hand, is a whole different subject. What do you know about teaching? Um, not a lot, actually. I mean, I've babysat and taught some kids how to sing songs and things like that, but teaching like an actual class is just something new. It's interesting in the way that you can get kids to have that wow factor and just have them love to be able to learn. Well, I've never really like taught children anything, but I've always gotten along with them pretty well, so I was really excited when I heard about the opportunity to come and combine one thing I really like science and, and environmental science and teaching kids like working with kids because I, they always kind of like look up to older kids that's so that's cool and then you can just kind of get them to think how you like in different ways and try to kind of transform a, the more complex way that we think of things but make make it like a kid way of thinking Quintner hopes to pass on basic notions about science as well as lessons for lifelong learning. I want little kids to start like through their whole life. Like what does that what 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 else could that mean? What kind of questions might revolve around that question and then just go further. That's how people learn about life is just by questioning and always being able to ask another question and look into that is just, I think, a valuable skill. Because you're not going to be limited to 15 of these? Yep. Jerry Castles is a teacher and school counselor at Northfield Midland High School. In his experience, when students get involved in teaching, it develops a greater understanding of what's being taught. You know the old saying, those who can't do, teach. Well, when I've worked with middle level students over the years, many years, I found it to be true that those who want to do, teach. And these kids, when they get onto something, they have a whole different level of learning when they know they're going to be out teaching it to somebody else. They get so much positive feedback of coming in as, you know, the role model, the young adult, 
and it makes them remember things and you know that they're not going to forget and that it creates meaning for them because there's an emotional component to the learning. The emotion component for them is interacting with the younger person. Science is just something that, I don't know, like I just love it. To get a third grader to love science, I think you just have to be really enthusiastic and positive about the whole thing. And if I can do that and get them to be as positive and enthusiastic as me, it's just wonderful. 4-H programs like this one provide Vermont grade school students with an introduction to the University of Vermont. That may seem small, but Castles believes it has a big impact on students. We know from a lot of research that students are making their decisions about post-secondary at a much earlier rate, particularly at the middle level. So I always have in the back of my mind, how can we raise the aspiration rates of these kids? The more we can put them in connection with a college or university or demythetize this idea of what it, it is to go to college, it really strengthens um, their ability to be post-secondary readiness in the end of it all. In the coming weeks and months, these students will begin passing on what they've learned here today. And you can bet Aurora Hoey will be ready. I'm learning just how to put it all together. Like, I know this all, but like, I know it at a high school level. And to try and teach it to a kindergartner, I kind of need to learn how to do that. I love learning. Learning, teaching, and making pinwheels. When it comes to protecting the environment for future generations, these students do more than try. In Fairly, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. If you're just joining us, we're learning about the 4-H Try for the Environment program, and I'm with the 4-H Teen and Leadership Program Coordinator, Lauren Traster. What are some of the key things that you want the teenagers to take away from this retreat? Well, as you heard from the video, I mean, when the teens looked at the curriculum, they were like, oh, this is easy, we know this stuff. <laughs> but we really wanted to make sure that they, they knew how to teach it, but specifically they needed to understand how to teach it to kids in kindergarten, first, second, and third grade. And as we actually, held, we actually um, set aside a whole afternoon for them where they had to uh, prep a lesson and then teach it to another group. And that's where they had a lot of their aha moments, which mm -hmm. was like, oh, wasn't a aha, it was like, oh no, we don't actually really know fully how to do this, or oh, I'm not comfortable speaking, or I don't know how to, how to time it so I do my piece and my partner does their piece. So we wanted them to leave the training feeling very confident. Mm -hmm. We wanted to set them up for success. And so everything we gave them, we gave them checklists so they knew exactly as they went out to market the program what they would need to say or do. Um, so they always had something to fall back on and we just we want to make sure that their experience is positive mm -hmm. so that they um, feel very connected to the try for the environment program and that when they go out and teach there it, it's going to be successful not only for them but that the kids that they're teaching are going to walk away and say wow I just learned something really cool and I'm excited about this and learned it in a different way not necessarily from an adult but from someone that they can kind of look up to exactly the 4-H the world is is uh, very familiar and experienced with having teens teach younger kids it is a model that we use quite a bit and one of the reasons we do is we know that messages are received much better when a young person is is getting that message for someone only slightly older so they really look to the teens as role models they find them exciting they look up to them and if a teen thinks science is cool or energy issues is cool well guess what mm -hmm. so are those those younger students and that's a win all the way around and so how is try for the environment funded so we applied for a grant from the State Farm Youth Advisory Board. They have um, a grant um, that they offer, I think, every year. I'm not quite sure, but mm -hmm. we um, applied for the grant and were awarded one to do this program. So we have funding until the end of August, and uh, my hope is that we can secure future funds to continue the program. If someone's interested in the program, what should they do? Well, they should contact me um, if they want to either be a teen uh, where they go out and teach or if they're a classroom teacher that wants the program. Or uh, Actually, the program can be delivered in a number of ways, whether it's at a library or an after-school program, a summer program. But I can be reached at 1-866-260-5603. That's a toll-free number or www.uvm.edu backslash extension backslash teen leadership.
Well, Lauren, thanks so much for joining us thanks today. Thanks for having me today. That's our program. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.